can now go back live to Annie Rose Ramos, who's uh, trying to put her mask on. Annie Rose, the last time we spoke with you, the police officers were trying to move you back from the yellow police tape in order to keep you safe. What can you tell us now? That's exactly right, Max. So if you see that um, that pole right here, it's just sort of leaning over, and they're a little concerned right now that it could kind of topple over and cause another kind of issue. And so they're trying to avoid that. They're trying to avoid anybody in this area. So they've moved us back to this side little driveway in between these two houses, just in front of where the explosion took place. You can see there are over dozens of crews here just trying to continue working through this rubble, through the what the explosion kind of left behind. You can see one one of the um, uh, fire department personnel coming through with some bottles of water because it is incredibly hot. And so crews are just trying to cycle in and out, trying to get as much water, stay cool um, as they get through this rubble. I mean, some people are working with chainsaws, but some other people are just pulling things out with their hands. I mean, we saw people pulling out clothing and, and kitchen supplies and mattresses just trying to get through this rubble. You can see one person just picked up a piece of a window and now they're, they're um, passing out water bottles. But I can tell you on the other side of this house, people remain in the front of their house waiting to get back inside. Uh, just after the explosion, moments after, police came down every single house and asked people to get outside immediately. They weren't quite sure about the risk that these, this gas leak posed to anybody else who lived throughout these neighborhoods. So people have been waiting outside in this extreme heat for just over four hours now. They've also cut off their electricity, so there's no electricity inside these people's homes. Many Many people are losing power with their batteries as they try and call loved ones, telling them that they're all right. Some people are trying to order food and just doing whatever they can to kind of stay cool. We actually just saw a neighbor down the street. Uh, paramedics responded to him. He was going into kind of like a heat stroke because he was just so overwhelmed with the amount of heat that is, is, is just present today. It's just incredibly hot and humid. Um, but in addition, now we're seeing crews, emergency services are walking from house to house in addition to being BG and &E. BG and e is leveling, measuring the levels of gas, but emergency services are going to each house trying to explain what the next steps are, and part of that is boarding up their houses. So many people, literally every single house that you see on this street surrounding where the explosion took place, their windows are gone or their windows are shattered. So a lot of this emergency services are going to provide help for people to board up their windows. I mean, we got to remember that this is a time of a pandemic. You just saw me, Max. I was I was taking off my mask, mask to kind of get a breather, and I am within six feet from, from anybody else. It's kind of a clear area right now, so um, my mask is just sort of right here. But this is a pandemic, and so as people are sort of crowded outside, waiting to get back into their homes, it, it, it's just been a really difficult time to impose the social distancing and make sure that all of that is being followed at a time where they're just trying to deal with the aftermath of what this explosion caused.